Hi everyone. Today I'd like to talk about freefall. And our goal here is going to be to use the kinematic equations we learned to solve problems for objects moving at a constant acceleration while they're in freefall. Well, what is freefall? Well, first thing, freefall is an object that is not being acted upon by any force other than gravity. So, for example, while I'm holding this pen, it's not in free fall. If I let go, while it's in midair, the only force acting on it is gravity. Well, wait, you might say, what about air resistance? You're absolutely right. In reality, air resistance is also acting on this pen when I let go of it. However, for the purposes of this course, we're going to neglect air resistance. So free fall is an object, is a situation where we do not have air resistance or air friction acting. For example, if we drop this ball and sheet of paper, it's pretty obvious that the ball is going to drop, fall faster than the paper. However, if we could remove the air from the room, we would find that they fall at the same rate. And Commander David Scott actually did this on an Apollo mission. When he was on the moon, he dropped a hammer and a feather at the same time. And they both fell at the same rate. They hit the ground at the same time. So we're going to analyze the motion of objects while they're falling or being thrown up, while the only force acting on them is gravity, and will neglect air resistance or air friction for the purposes of this course. Later on in other physics courses, you will go into considerably more depth on air resistance. Now, the acceleration due to gravity is how much an object near the surface of the Earth accelerates toward the center of the Earth. We typically think of this as a constant at 9.8 meters per second squared. But in reality, this acceleration due to gravity, this constant that we give the symbol lowercase g, is a bit of a misnomer. Really, what we should call it is the gravitational field strength near the surface of the Earth. And it is that as well. But what it's really trying to tell you is if we drop this ball, it will accelerate toward the center of the Earth at 9.8 meters per second squared. It'll accelerate 9.8 meters per second every second. As we move further away from the Earth, g decreases. And as we get closer to the center of the Earth, or if we run another planet that's more massive, and we'll learn more about gravity later on, but g can actually change on other planets. So near the surface of the Earth, the acceleration due to gravity, the acceleration experienced by an object in free fall, is 9.8 meters per second squared, always toward the center of the Earth. Now we'll start off by talking about objects that are falling from rest. Anything that we drop or that falls from rest has an initial velocity of v naught of zero. Now when we talked about the kinematic equations, we said we're going to call the direction of an object's initial motion positive. So for an object dropped from rest, since it's initially moving downwards, we'll call that the positive direction. Then when we look at the problem, we also realize that the acceleration, which is down toward the center of the Earth, points in the same direction as our positive axis. Since they point in the same direction, our acceleration is going to be positive g, or positive 9.81 meters per second squared. Other than that, it's just a standard kinematics problem. Let's take a look at an example. How far will a brick, starting from rest, fall freely in three seconds? Neglect air resistance. Well, we can figure this out by first recognizing that this is a vertical motion problem. Since the object will go down first, we'll call that the positive direction, down. And we'll set up our vertical motion table, v naught, v, delta y, a, and t. And since it starts from rest, v naught is equal to zero. Delta y is what we're trying to find. And we know the acceleration is positive g. Positive because acceleration points down and positive is down. So that's going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. We don't know what our final velocity is. We do know that time is 3 seconds. So. Trying to find how far it falls, that's delta y, we need to pick a kinematic equation that has most or all of our variables in it. Well, the one that comes to mind very easily is delta y equals v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. 
And a nice trick for simplification, if you notice that v naught is 0, 0 times anything is 0, so that whole term becomes 0. This simplifies to delta y equals 1 half a t squared. Now we can substitute in our values with units to say that delta y equals 1 half times our acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the square of our time, 3 seconds squared. And when I do all this, plug it into my calculator, I should come up with a delta y, or a vertical displacement, of about 44 meters. And notice our answer is positive. That means that it was displaced in the same direction that we called positive there. So it was displaced 44 meters down. Of course that makes sense. You wouldn't drop a brick and have it fall upwards. So, let's take a look at a more complicated type of situation. What happens when you launch an object upward, or it starts with some initial velocity going up? Well, we have to look at the motion of the object on the way up and on the way down. Now, since the object's initial motion is upward, we're going to call the up direction our positive y we will call our acceleration, which points down, is in the opposite direction as our positive axis. So our acceleration now is going to be negative g, or negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, things to note here for objects that travel up and down. There are a couple tricks that make this much, much simpler. At the highest point, as an object goes up, when it right before it comes down, for an instant, its velocity is zero. So at its highest point, we know v equals 0. That can be very, very helpful in solving problems. Other things to notice is for an object that travels up for a split second stops and then comes back down is the symmetry of motion. However long it takes for it to come up, if it comes back to the exact same altitude, to the exact same height, it'll take the exact same amount of time to come up as it does to come down. Whatever its initial velocity is, as you launch it, if you launch it at 50 meters per second up, it'll slow down, slow down, slow down, stop. Then it will turn around, start coming down, faster, faster, faster. And when it gets to that exact same height you launched it from, it'll be going 50 meters per second down, as long as we neglect air resistance. So we have symmetry of motion. We can use that to help us solve some of these problems. Let's take a look at an example. A ball thrown vertically upward reaches a maximum height of 30 meters. At its maximum height, what's the speed of the ball? Well, the object travels up. At its highest point, it stops. Comes back down. V equals 0 at its highest point. So what's the speed at its maximum height? 0. That simple. How about if we look at a basketball player who jumps straight up for a rebound? If she's in the air for 0.8 seconds, how high did she jump? All right, now we've got something that's a little bit more involved. First off, the basketball player starts on the ground, jumps up. So we're going to call up our positive y direction as we make our vertical motion table. Now we can also realize that the basketball player travels up and then comes back down. And at the highest point, velocity is 0. And if it takes 0.8 seconds for the entire trip up and down, it must take 0.4 seconds to go up and 0.4 seconds to come down. So here's another trick to solving some of these problems. Oftentimes, it's a lot simpler to just solve half of the problem, which is what we'll do here. Let's analyze the motion of the basketball player on the way up only. Well, for a vertical motion table, we have v naught, v, delta y, a, and t. We don't know the initial velocity. But our final velocity, if we're looking at just the motion on the way up, we can say that that's 0. Acceleration, if we called up the positive direction, acceleration points down. So positive y is this way, acceleration is that way. They're in opposite directions. Therefore, the acceleration must be negative g, or negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And finally, if we're looking at just the motion on the way up, the time involved is 0.4 seconds, not 0.8 seconds. Got to be careful there. We're looking for delta y, how high she jumped, and we don't know v naught yet. Well, I know three things, so I know I can solve this problem. 
But if I'm looking for delta y, I don't see any equations that can give me delta y directly. So why don't we solve for v naught first, and then we'll find delta y. So we can start with v equals v naught plus at, or v naught equals v minus at. Now we can substitute in our values v naught equals v zero minus a, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared times t, 0.4 seconds, for a total initial velocity of about 3.92 meters per second. So we know v naught now, it's no longer a question mark, it's 3.92 meters per second. Now we can solve for delta y. We can use any equation we want that has delta y in it, and the easiest one that I can think of, delta y equals v naught t, plus one-half a t squared. And we can substitute in directly delta y equals 3.92 meters per second times our time of 0.4 seconds plus one-half times a negative 9.8 meters per second squared times t squared, 0.4 seconds squared for a total delta y of about 0 0.78 meters. That's a little less than one meter, about a yard, which makes sense. A reasonable vertical jump is somewhere in the two, three, two, two to three feet range. Three feet's a really big jump, or one meter would be a really great vertical leap. So for a basketball player who's training, 78% of a meter, that's a pretty good jump. That's reasonable. So. There's a problem where we had to go through a couple steps and also recognize the symmetry of motion as the basketball player jumped up and came back down. Let's take a look at another problem. This time we have a ball that's thrown straight downward with the speed of 0.5 meters per second from a height of 4 meters. What is the speed of the ball 0.7 seconds after it is released? Well, we recognize right, right away it's a vertical motion problem. And the initial velocity, the initial motion of the ball, is going to be down. So let's call that our positive y. Now we can make our vertical motion table. v naught, v, delta y, a, and t. We know the initial velocity is 0.5 meters per second down. Since it's down and we call down the positive direction, v naught is going to be positive 0.5 meters per second. We're trying to find the final speed, so there's our find. Delta y, ooh, this is tricky. It says it's thrown from a height of four meters, but it doesn't ask us delta y, and it doesn't say the total distance traveled by the ball in this time is four meters. So we really don't know delta y. Got to read that one very carefully. Acceleration, well, acceleration points down and positive y points down. They're in the same direction. Therefore, this must be our positive g, or 9.8 meters per second squared. And we want to know the speed after 0. seconds has elapsed, so t is 0. 0.7 seconds. Now we can go and we can solve for our final velocity directly. We know v naught, v, a, and t. We have a kinematic equation with those variables in it already. So we can say that v equals v naught plus a, t or v equals 0.5 meters per second plus 9.8 meters per second squared times our time, 0.7 seconds. Handy dandy calculator should tell me this is about 7.4 meters per second. All right, let's take a look at one last sample problem. If we have a baseball player, and she throws the ball upward with the speed of 30 meters per second, and we're going to neglect friction, find the maximum height reached by the baseball. Well, for this sort of problem, again, it's a vertical motion problem, and the ball starts going up, so we'll call that positive y. And we can make our vertical motion table v naught, v, delta y, a, and t. Our acceleration points down, it always does, and since that's in the opposite direction of positive y, our acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. What else do we know? It starts with an initial velocity of 30 meters per second. 
and 30 meters per second is upward in the same direction we called our positive y, so that's a positive v naught. We only have two things here so far. We're trying to find the maximum height, delta y. We need one more piece of information. Well, if the ball is going up and then coming back down, what we can do is we can realize that its highest point right there, its velocity is zero. So, when its velocity is zero, that's at the point where it's at its maximum displacement. So if we want its maximum displacement, we'll solve for this problem when that final velocity is equal to zero. There's our third unknown. Right away, we can jump into our kinematic equations with those four variables. v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta y. Rearrange this to get delta y by itself. Delta y equals v squared minus v naught squared over 2a or delta y equals, as we substitute in with units, v squared, that's 0 squared, minus 30 meters per second, our v naught value squared, all over 2 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Run that through the calculator, and I should come up with a delta y right around 45.9, or 46 meters. All right, that should give you a good idea of what sorts of problems you're going to see. For next steps, why don't you see if you can create your own dropped object problem? See if you can figure out something interesting or fun to drop. Uh, who knows, maybe you drop your physics teacher off the third floor, uh, third floor roof of your school or whatever it happens to be. How long does it take that teacher to hit the ground? And then see if you can solve the problem. Then try your own vertically launched problem, where you start with some initial velocity upward, and see if you can solve that. And of course, if you need help, want more information or extra practice, you can always check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks, and have a terrific day.